Hey, welcome back to online worship. Hope you enjoyed the snow that we had earlier in the week. And uh, you'll be seeing some nice uh, video footage of that throughout the service. Thank you so much for your pledges. Many have been uh, coming in. We are grateful for your generosity. It's this generosity that we express through our service, through our spiritual gifts, and our resources that is the lifeblood of the body of Christ here at Emmanuel. And so we would be grateful to receive your 2021 Together for Joy pledge if you've not yet been able to do so. We believe the scriptures teach that joyful, consistent, sacrificial, and generous giving is a vital way to express our love and our worship to God. We're filled with gratitude for you, Emmanuel, especially in these hard times that we find ourselves in. This coming Saturday between 8 and 9 a.m., at the church parking lot is Casa Maria. So bring your brown bag lunches to help feed the hungry in Tucson. But in addition to that, at that same time, we are having a socially distanced annual Super Bowl of Caring this Saturday. That too will be in the parking lot area. Uh, we encourage you to bring your loose change from around the house or any bills that you might have and proceeds from that are going to go towards the Vail Food Bank. And what you can do is vote for your own Super Bowl team by putting your donation into either the Buccaneers pot or in the Chiefs pot. It'll be a fun time and we'll make announcements on social media of uh, which team won the Super Bowl challenge. Enjoy now the prelude. Please join me in prayer. We pray to you, O God, be our helper and our protector. Save the afflicted, have mercy on the lowly, raise up the fallen, help the needy, humble the proud, and return the lost. Feed the hungry, release the captive, heal the sick, revive the weak, and comfort those in fear. All this we ask for the sake of the world that you love, and in the name of the one you sent to save us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
love and beauty endless worth nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry your presence is here Good morning. This week, as we look at Psalm 139 and how wonderfully we are made, we asked children, what is the best thing your body can do? Here are their thoughts. My body can dance. My, my body can jump. Boom, boom. My body, I'm Ava, and this is what my body can do. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. Now... My my favorite thing that I like to do with my body is do a cartwheel. Can you show us? Oh. Okay, so my favorite thing to do with my body is um, when I get, get to my birthday, I jump on the jumping castle, and that's my favorite thing to do. Do you want to show us how high you jump? Okay. Awesome! Wow! Good jumps. I could do a handstand with my body. You want to show us? Yes. 
Great job. Mommy. What's the best thing you can do with your body? A handstand. You gonna show us your trick? Wow, look at you! Good job. My body can dance. What else? Body can poop and pee. Oh, really? <laughs> what and else can you put? And my body can eat and pee. Good. And my body can walk. Good job. And that's all. And that's it. Mm -hmm. The best thing my body can do is this. Have you ever thought about what an amazing creation we are? There are so many parts and how they all work together just as God designed them to work. Our brains send signals to control our body. Our bones support us. Our muscle moves us and our skin protects us. We are really wonderfully made. Our sense of touch is an amazing thing. Just look at your fingertips. Your fingerprint is the pattern on the tip of your finger. Your fingerprint is one of a kind. No one else has the same one. See the swirls, the circles, and the waves? There isn't anyone in the world just like you. God loves you for you. And he knows everything about you, even your fingerprint. I thank God for doing such a wonderful job in creating you. Have a great day. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Lord God, the scriptures teach that your word is quick and powerful. It's living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. 
seeking out the place where soul is divided from spirit and joints from marrow. Your word is able to pass judgment on secret thoughts and intentions of the heart. So God, shine your light on not only your word, but upon us. Amen. Any small thoughts that we have about God are blown to smithereens by Psalm 139. Here we see played out in real life God's ubiquitous presence and the limitations of human knowledge. In essence, Psalm 139 puts us in our place, reminding us that we're not God, but we are God's beloved. Now our Judeo-Christian faith leaves no room for deism, where there's some clockmaker God that designs everything and then walks away, moving on to the next project. Instead, we learn from Psalm 139 that God is majestic and transcendent, intimate and imminent, all at the same time. Psalm 139 is the most personal and introspective of all the Psalms. In fact, probably in all of the scriptures. In the first six verses alone, the psalmist speaks directly to God ten times and speaks of himself eleven times. Things appear at the surface very serene in this psalm, but below the surface, anxiety and danger are bubbling up. The psalmist is raw and unfiltered in this moment. The better angels of our nature also wrestle with our inner demons. And so there were enemies that were threatening the psalmist's life. And so here he goes to the temple and turns to God in prayer in a time of stress and vulnerability. Totally tapped into his mortality and God's immortality. So try to feel the underlying tension in this psalm that we're about to read. Is God's inescapable presence a good thing or is it a terrifying thing? And when we discover who we really are in God's presence, are we good or are we flawed? The answer is a definitive yes. But at the end of the day, Psalm 139 affirms that we can entrust our very lives into God's loving care through the dangers, the toils, and the snares of this life. So let's hear now the word of the Lord from Psalm 139, a psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. That I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Oh, that you would kill the wicked, O God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me, those who speak of you maliciously, 
and lift themselves up against you for evil. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God endures forever. Thanks be to God. Francis was on the run, running from his father, running from his failure as a medical student, running from God, running from himself. Run, Francis, run. He ran to the slums of London, ran into starvation, drug addiction, and disease. With all his running, he finally hit the wall, hit rock bottom. But God was even there, waiting. You see, Jesus loves us so much, he'd even go to hell for us to snatch us out of the flames. In 1859, Francis Thompson was born into a well-to-do Roman Catholic home. His parents had big plans for him. They wanted him to become a physician. But it was a career that he detested. He failed his exams three times and then fled to London. Then he failed every occupation he tried. Although his father sent a little bit of money to him in care of a library, He was refused admission into that library because he was disheveled and had a very distinct smell about him. When he collapsed in the street, a prostitute rescued him. Another friend brought Francis, ironically enough, to a Franciscan religious community where he kicked his drug habit. But there was one thing he was unable to shake off the hound of heaven nipping at his heels. And so the poem that he scribbled on some sugar paper became a classic, the hound of heaven. I fled him down the nights and down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I fled him down the labyrinthine ways of my own mind. And in the midst of tears I hid from him and under running laughter. Up vested hopes, I sped and shot precipitated down titanic glooms of chasmid fears from those strong feet that followed, followed after. But with unhurrying chase and unperturbed pace, deliberate speed, majestic instancy, they beat, and a voice beat, more instant than the feet, all things betray thee who betrayest me. Francis' story is really the story of human history since the very beginning. Adam and Eve, they tried to play hide-and-seek from God after eating the forbidden fruit. Come out, come out, wherever you are. And of course, God found them in the garden. Job, himself feeling hounded by God, said, Your hands made and shaped me like clay. But now none can rescue me from your grasp. God commanded Jonah to go to Nineveh, but he went in the exact opposite direction to Tarshish. Yet even in the uttermost parts of the sea, the whale of heaven swam and spit Jonah out to Nineveh, where Israel's enemies repented and found God in a foreign land far, far from the Holy Land. We too both run from God and run to God. We can run, but we can't hide. Now, we feel God's presence in different ways. Sometimes God comforts the afflicted and other times He afflicts the comfortable. But God will not let His people go from His grip of grace. Psalm 139 is part prayer Part journal entry. You've searched me, O God, and you've sifted me. You know my resting and my rising, my work days and my holidays. 
when I'm commuting or sheltering in place. You know my journeying, my wanderings, my strayings. You keep vigil over me while I sleep, and there you are by my side when I awake. You get me, God. In fact, you know me better than I know myself. You can tell me things about myself that I didn't even know of. You know me through and through and inside out. You see, you can only really know yourself by knowing God. The psalmist prayer continues. You're near to me, God. Closer to me than my own breath. Nearer to me than my very own two feet and two hands. You know what I'm going to say before I use my words. You see, our God is Emmanuel. God with us. God knows us thoroughly. Our longings and our cravings, our hopes and our dreams, our fears and our failures, our pain and our regret. God knows it all. In fact, God not only knew us before we were born, but He already sees our future that's yet to unfold. God created us, sustains us, knows us, and he still loves us. Warts and all, God is crazy in love with you, with me, with us. Together, he loves the world and everyone in it. In fact, he loves us so much that he would die for us. He did die for us. But we can't get too cozy with God, though. God isn't safe, but he's good. God accepts us right where we are, but he also doesn't want to leave us as we are. Our good God wants to better us. And so Psalm 139 is an invitation to let our lives be an open book before God. It's an invitation to encounter and commune with our loving God. Now, this is both exciting and scary because it involves change in our lives. A shedding and sloughing off our old ways, even dying to them, and allowing our new self to flourish. This is a messy process. Now, Psalm 139 goes against our preservation instincts. There are corners of our lives that we would prefer just to hide to remain untouched by God. In fact, God, can you give me just a little more space? Can you give me some breathing room? But the hound of heaven doesn't let us do that. So you might as well just drop your guard. Raise the white flag. Surrender to God's love. Jesus, take the reins. It's a scary place, but we need not be afraid. God's got your back. God's got my back. He's got our back, Emmanuel, together. You see, we're surrounded by God. We're hemmed in, besieged by God, the psalmist says, behind us and before us. There's no getting around Him. Whether you go west, go east, or go north or south, young man or young woman, God is there. God is everywhere. If I ascend to the heavens above, you are there, O oh God. If I'm all alone in the hospital, you are there. If I descend into hell below, you too are there. For Christ went there for us, and He lived to tell about it. Now, there are times in life where God feels absent. This may even be a season now that you feel that way. But yet, even in the absence, God is present. On cloudy and overcast days, we can't see the sun, right? But we know the sun is still there. So it is with God. He's there, even when we feel alone. And God always sees us. You can't hide in the dark from God. God sees you in the daytime and the nighttime. Dark and light are one and the same with God. 
You see, our God is the one in Genesis 1 who spoke to that formless void and the deep darkness saying, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light, the light that was once darkness, and he declared that it was good. You see, God created not only the cosmos, but God created you. God created me from the dust of the earth. Or as the psalmist says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Each of us. Yes, you. Don't don't look behind you right now. I'm talking about you. Yes. God loves you. You, you were reverently, wondrously, strikingly, remarkably, differently made in ways utterly beyond human comprehension by God Almighty. You see, the scriptures teach that human life, all human life is sacred from the womb to the tomb. And even when you find yourself in the Zoom room, your life is sacred. When you're feeling screened out and you're feeling like a zombie, you still are God's beloved. Did you know that God thinks about you all the time? You haven't slipped his mind. God never forgets you. God's thoughts towards you are good thoughts. And they're not only good thoughts, they are precious thoughts to you towards every person that has ever existed. And God's precious thoughts towards you and I and everyone are greater than the grains of sand on the seashore. Now to wrap up this prayer, the psalmist comes back full circle from where he started. And he prays once again, Search me, God, and know my heart and know my mind. Dare to live a God-examined life. Not just a self-examined life, that is important, but a God-examined life. Make 139 your prayer in 2021. Come into my life, God. I open the door of my heart to you. Sit and sup with me. Search and sift me, God. Test me. Understand my anxious thoughts. God, keep me flexible and malleable in my life. Teachable, moldable, and open to change. You see, God wants you and I to stay open, no matter who you are. Be an open person. Be an open conservative. Be an open liberal. Be an open moderate. Be humble, too. And change. And become like a child. Stay open. God, keep me on the right path. Help me course correct if I'm on the wrong path. Keep me moving forward. Cleanse me, O God, from petty hatreds in my life. I pray for my enemies. Help me to love them. Not demonize or dog them. And let us all be centered in Christ Jesus. Let us all be led by Christ, united in Christ, following Christ, rooted and grounded in God's love. That's the best way. That's the everlasting way that the psalmist talks about. The ancient way. It's tried and it's true. And that's a little bit of heaven here on earth. You see, Jesus is God's yes to all of his promises. A yes to the fact that he'll hold us fast. A yes that he's going to guide us throughout our lives. A yes that he's going to see us through our trials. And a yes that he's never going to let us go or leave us orphaned as we boldly go forth in mission that God has called us to, Christ is right there with us as well. Never will I leave you nor forsake you. So whether we're in here or we're out there, we are always playing catch up to God. I don't think anyone did a better job summing up Psalm 139 than the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, and might I add plague? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, 
nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one the one for whom you loved and gave your son for humanity increase my love help me to love with open arms like you do a love that erases all the lines and sees the truth Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love Oh, how He loves us From the homeless to the famous and in between You formed us you made us carefully Cause in the end We're all your children So help me to love with open arms Like you do A love that erases all the lines And sees the truth Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love So let all my life tell of who you are And the wonder of your never end That you're wonderful and such a good father Oh, let all my life tell of who you are And the wonder of your never-ending love Oh, let all my life tell You're wonderful and such a good father You are wonderful and such a good father So help me to love with open arms like you do A love that erases all the lines and sees the truth Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love For our prayer time together today, we're going to do a special spiritual exercise called Lectio Divina, which means sacred reading. It's an ancient spiritual practice where a short passage of Scripture is read several times meditatively. It's been practiced in Judaism throughout the years, as well as by the early church fathers up until this day. The goal is through stillness and imagination to put yourself into the scene of Scripture. Now the passage we're going to pray through is the last two verses of Psalm 139, and we're going to read it three different times slowly. Now remember that as you imagine yourself in this uh, Scripture, that the psalmist is um, 
being hounded by enemies and is very anxious and has come to the temple to pray to the Lord. And so in desperation, he cries out and longs for an encounter with the living God in his time of need. Let us now pray. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. What image or word jumps out at you from this passage? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. What is God saying to you through the psalmist prayer? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now spend time in a few moments of silence and in the stillness. Listen for God's voice to you. Let's now conclude this time by praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive now the charge and the benediction. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and always. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.